Hello from the brooder. This is my first ever flock. Um, we got them a week ago today, actually. They're growing fast. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, how I set up my brooder, see if it would inspire um, any of your own ideas. And I've been really happy with everything that I've done in here so far with a couple of changes I would have made in hindsight. Um, so I wanted to share those with you guys. So you can see that I started with an extra large dog crate that I already had on hand. Um, we weren't using it for my dog anymore and I actually been meaning to sell it and I'm so glad I didn't because it has made such a fantastic brooder. I wish I came up with this idea but I actually found it on um, an online chicken keeping forum and I was like oh my gosh that's so genius. So if you just google dog crate brooder you will find all sorts of images that are really helpful. So that's why I wanted to include this because I'm really grateful for people that share their experiences so that they can inspire me. So I hope that I can do the same for some of you. So um, what I did is I started with the brooder that has the tray in the bottom, which is awesome for keeping um, any moisture. Um, if my water jug leaks or anything like that, um, of course they don't, they don't urinate enough for it to seep down, but it's just good knowing that the moisture and everything is staying up off my floors. Um, and then I lined the bottom and the sides with cardboard and sealed all the corners with duct tape, which is working, but you do have to be careful. Um, I would have used more zip ties where I could and duct tape only where I absolutely had to because they are pecking at stuff like this. They haven't gotten any fibers off of it yet, but um, I don't, I don't love that idea. So um, that is something to consider, something I would do differently. <laughs> they really love this little perch right here. Um, I did this just so that I could still get in um, the door whenever I opened it up. But what I would do differently here, excuse me girls, is um, I would do it just like this, but then on the front I would use zip ties to secure another large piece of cardboard. That way when I closed it, uh, this whole part would be covered because especially little Miss Olivia here actually um, has learned to fly out and fit fit right through these holes and she pushes her way out and actually has wandered the house like that. So I did not expect that at all. Um, and now a few of them have started doing it too. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, I would have gone up higher all the way to the top with this because they actually fly and perch onto this and try to push through and they're getting better at that every day and especially with the front because they love as soon as they open this door they just love to perch right here so that's what I would have done differently used more zip ties less duct tape and made it higher so that only the ceiling was um, open when the gate is closed so um, there's my two cents there. And then I just use the large shavings, um, pine shavings. I heard cedar is not good for them. So I just use the pine shavings, which is really affordable, <laughs> really affordable from tractor supply. Um, I put a few inches down at the bottom and every like three days, I just kind of fluff it up to disperse, um, kind of mix in the poop and urine, um, and any food that's dropped. Hey baby girl. Um, and that just kind of uh, keeps it from getting too solid on the top. And then I cover it with like a half inch to an inch of more pine shavings. So kind of like a deep litter method in a brooder. And I'm happy with that so far. Our house smells like, like that food smell and the pine shavings, but it does not smell like poop at all. So um, we'll see how that goes as they get older. But so far, I'm really happy with that method for the shavings. So once I got the shavings in, um, water is super duper important. You wanna make sure you have plenty of clean water and you'll see that it looks like Gatorade in here. And that's because I added a half a packet. Um, every time I refill it, I add a half a packet of this Save a Chick electrolyte mix um, just to help them uh, be extra healthy. What do you think about that? You like it? You like your Gatorade? <laughs> um, and you'll see my little DIY um, chick waterer. I didn't want, I like to DIY things whenever I can. Um, and then some things I feel like are just worth buying. So I always have a bunch of these vinegar jugs left over that I try to utilize in the garden. So I went ahead and grabbed one and I have these extra chick waterers that I have, um, I already had purchased. It's the rent -a coop brand. I'm really happy with them. 
keeps the cup 75% full. It's worked really well. I haven't had um, any leaking, except I'll tell you one instance that it will leak, but I got this six pack, and so I'm gonna use these five for the coupe, and then I have this extra one that I used um, obviously for the chick water. So I went ahead and cut it all the way around and just left a little piece here for a hinge, opened it up so that I could install this, which was really easy. Um, you basically just show you, you just take off this, uh, wing nut and washer and, um, put this on the outside through a hole that is just big enough for this to fit through, if not a bit smaller. So you really have to push it through to create a good seal. And then uh, tighten this down from the inside and then sealed that with duct tape. And then I can open this up, fill it with the water and the electrolyte mix. And I will make sure I only go to about here so that it doesn't get near the cut line, of course, so it doesn't leak. And it's been working brilliantly. So I have it up on these bricks so that it's a little bit higher for them. And also because this cup actually sits lower, than the bottom of the waterer, the jug. So if I put this back, like if I don't set this right or it gets bumped, see how it's tipping? It's gonna keep filling and filling and overflowing. Hello. So it's really important that you elevate the bottom of it and let this hang over and then it works beautifully. So I've had this going for just over a week and I haven't had any problems as long as it's situated correctly. So. Those bricks have been good, just anything sturdy and heavy enough, um, sturdy enough to support the water and elevate that a bit. So, and I can just keep elevating that more and more as they get bigger and they love it. They found this water immediately. I got them um, in the mail, they were mail order and I put them in and instantly at least half of them took to this right away. So, so that made me really happy. Now for the food, also very important of course, um, I thought about <laughs> DIYing out of cardboard. I'm all about cardboard, obviously. Um, one of these I've seen where people just make a triangular sort of shape um, and cut their holes in it. And I thought about doing that, but this was only six bucks and it uh, has a double side, so it'll feed a lot of chicks. And I got really sick of them um, standing on that top corner because um, it goes down on the other side. So there's a point at the top and they were standing on that and pooping on and in their food uh, container. So I just added with duct tape and cardboard because you can do anything with duct tape and cardboard. Um, I just added this to that side. It'll be easy to take off when I need to refill it. Um, actually, I can just open it up from here. I won't even have to take it off. And then that, that hangs over enough so that um, I don't think they'll even want to perch on this because um, it's slippery. But if they do, then it should keep the poop out of their food because that was that was getting gross. So um, that's what I've got with the food. And I'm feeding them the Mana Pro Chick Starter and Grower Crumbles. And they um, have been doing really well with that. And I, I like that company. It seems like a good company. So next, I'll show you the roosting bar. Not um, completely necessary, but I thought I mostly added it for a jungle gym type feature just so they wouldn't be bored. Um, I just put a slit down the cardboard and put this bamboo stake that I had from the garden in there. And it's actually poking all the way out through here and I can just reuse it in the garden when I'm done with it. But um, they are just now a little, they're like, I think about nine days old and a couple of them are starting to jump up there. So that not only will give them something to do, but it'll help them to practice roosting um, because we don't want them sleeping in nesting boxes once they get in their coop. We want them sleeping on their roosts. So I figure the earlier we introduce that, the better. And then over here, it only took them about four or five days to notice this chick treat. This is also a Mana Pro product and they love it. And uh, whatever gets knocked to the ground, they just love scratching around underneath it. Um, and they just have a blast with that. So it has like seeds and um, all chick friendly stuff in there. So that's the only treat that I give them right now. I'm not giving them anything else until they get older treat wise. And then of course, super duper important is the heating. <laughs> um, I was going to use the heating pad method and make, um, uh, if you Google that, the heating pad method where you, you use like a bit of fencing, wire fencing to make sort of a, an arch and then you cover it with um, a heating pad and then a towel and 
it makes a nice cozy little dark cave for them to go into. Um, I might use that in a larger brooder when I upgrade them from this one if they outgrow it before I can get them into the coop because um, it's still pretty cold. We're in February, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to move them from this to the coop. So if they have another larger brooder that I create out in our unheated sunroom, I might use this heat lamp in addition to the heating pad method. So give that a Google. Um, the Backyard Chicken Forum has a whole thread about that, and it's very fascinating to me. I like that it seems more natural um, where they can go into their um, the little cave, almost like going under the mother hen so um, but anyways in the end I just ended up getting one of these and I have a ceramic bulb in here that way their um, day and night sleep cycle isn't interrupted with one of those glowing light um, heat lamps so I'm happy with that and they have always seemed to be plenty warm um, a lot of times they're even moving out in this area when they get really warm and uh, just to the left of me here is our wood stove so they are in a nice warm spot um, never drops below really 65 in here and it gets really toasty here next to the wood stove so they're plenty warm and uh, I'm happy with that I haven't had to adjust it I've had it in this exact position since the day we got them home I'll adjust it once they get tall enough to where I feel like their backs are going to be hitting the uh, the light bulb so I don't want that of course and then our last little feature over here is just this deep terracotta pot that I filled with um, about two-thirds organic potting soil and uh, they didn't have too many big chunks in it it's not one of those that has like a bunch of bark in it it's fairly fine and then the other third is wood ash and I have it near the heat lamp so they can take a nice little dust bath in there they haven't quite figured out that it's a dust bath yet um, but I, I bet in no time they will um, and they, uh, yeah, they just like to scratch around in there. First I used a shallower, it was actually a pie dish that I never use, and it was, um, like a third of that height, and that was really stupid because they just immediately started playing around in there and scratched it all out. So I'm hoping that this will give them, um, a spot where they can, uh, really use it as a dust bath without, um, kicking it all out. So we'll see with that, but... So these are all the features of our brooder. Of course, some nice artwork on the sides is good. <laughs> My daughter drew on these back boxes before I even put them up. So I think they're enjoying their artwork. But uh, yeah, that's about it. So I will try to make another video um, whenever I move them to their next brooder. And I'd also like to try to make a video of how I maintain the brooder. I just um, refilled their food and their dust bath and replenish their shavings. So I will try to make a quick video about how I maintain it, just in case you're curious about that. And I would be so happy if you click subscribe. I am new to YouTube um, as of right now. You can usually uh, find me over on Instagram, Freckles and Sprouts. Um, and I'm happy to meet you either here or there, but please subscribe and stay tuned for more um, videos as we watch these beautiful girls grow. This is our first flock, like I said, and I'm just so excited to add them to our backyard. And uh, primarily, you're going to find organic gardening information and watch our garden grow throughout 2020 and beyond. So thank you for being here and uh, take care.